Hey folks, welcome to another video, hopefully a quick one. Uh, and in this one I'm revisiting a subject that I started talking about a long time ago, but I often revisit it, so... And it's the transactional box pattern. So, if you didn't look at this post and didn't watch this video, I would say go for it. But, just quickly, transactional box pattern is one possible way th uh, that we can use, a possible pattern that we can use to ensure consistency when we do some change in our persistency, like our database, and also want to publish a message to our messaging system, because there's no transactions between them. Uh, it could happen that we do a change on the database, but then fail to send a message or something like that. So the transaction outbox pattern is one way we can uh, handle that problem. And, for example, in a relational database, as I've used in past examples, uh, namely Postgres, what we normally do is create a table called Outbox, where when we do a change in the database, in the same transaction, we insert a row in that table saying, uh, uh, with the payload of the message that we want to send. So it's in the same transaction, so it's there, and then we have some other process that reads that table and publishes the message to the actual um, messaging system, be it Kafka, be it whatever. So, in the past, when I showed you, I used the polling uh, approach. So, I had the process that every amount of seconds uh, read, and if there are new messages, publish them. Another alternative is using like um, a way to be notified every time something changes. In a relational database, we can do this by hooking into the transactional log, so every time something changes, we can see it and publish. So, not too long ago, I created a video using a tool called Debezium that does just that. We can hook into Postgres transactional log, uh, called the write-ahead log, and every time something changes in specific tables, it then can replicate, or in this case, can send messages in the, um, and do some transformations. So that, that was the tool that I showed you in this video. So, but then after this, I was wondering, what if I wanted to do something in .NET to achieve the same result? So I want to hook into Postgres write ahead log, which is used, like I said, for this kind of stuff, for replication, for example, if we have a main uh, database and then we have replicas that we want to keep replicating stuff into theirs. So, my question was, can I do it easily? I know it's possible, of course, if Debezium exists, it means we can do it, but I didn't want to write hardcore database transaction law parsing stuff. So, I was just wondering, is it too hard? And it turns out that it's not. Uh, because the npg SQL, which is the library that we normally use to access Postgres in .NET, already has a bunch of APIs and types to help us build such a thing. So it's not so hard to, to implement, it turns out. So in this video, I want to show you this implementation. Keep in mind, it's a proof of concept, so it's not at all production ready. But I was just wondering, can I do it? And yeah. The answer is yes, and it's it's possible. It's not super hard, uh, so just need a bit, a bit more work. I just took like uh, one day less than that to do this quick proof of concept. So it takes a bit more to put it in a production ready state, but again, doesn't seem to to be super hard. So let's take a look at how we can do it. So just before going for the code, uh, I would encourage you to take a look at the previous video and if I remember I'll put a link to it uh, somewhere um, uh, about Debezium uh, but and the sample because I'm using basically the same sample but instead of Debezium I'm creating another project to handle what was Debezium was doing so but what I have here is a docker compose file so that uh, I can test things easily and if you want you can just clone the repo and also do the same on your end and I have like uh, some Kafka stuff, I have Postgres, uh, like I mentioned in that previous video, 
Postgres needs to be configured to use write ahead log level logical so that we can use logical replication to implement this uh, outbox pattern like this. I also have seek running so we can have some logs. And then I have a producer project which basically just has a creates the outbox table and every 30 seconds puts 1000 messages there just for us to see things happening. We have the outbox publisher which we will I will show you and we have a consumer which is just another application that's consuming and logging so just so we know that things are working so let's take a look at the the actual code so i'll jump to this but basically we have a .NET application with a background service which is always running and checking as you'll see further in the code not production ready like the hard coded connection string Again, proof of concept, keep that in mind. I will jump this part and I'll explain in a minute. And let's go to the main event, which is execute the sync. So, first thing I do here is initialize. This is probably not the way it should be done in production, but as I want this demo to work out of the box, so I want just to run Docker Compose and everything works. So I've built things in a way so that we set up the database with the code and because when using docker compose we don't know the order and the time it takes for containers and the applications inside of them to be ready so i've done, done some stuff to be sure that the demo would work uh, as much out of the box as possible of course sometimes it, stuff happens but mostly it should work so i'm using a retry policy to be sure that we can that even if Postgres takes a bit to, to get ready, the um, eventually this will work. So what we do is create a public check if exists a publication. If not, we create. What is a publication? So a publication is like let's imagine it's like a topic in in Kafka. It's uh, we are saying that. We want that the things that happen to this uh, table of a specific type, for example, inserts, are not, give us a notification for anyone uh, subscribing on that publication. So first I'm checking if it exists, if not create it, to be sure that we need to create it. And then creating it, as you can see, just raw SQL over here. I'm creating a publication with the name Outbox Publication for table Outbox Messages. It's all I care. Although the database only has that table, so nothing else would happen, but normally you have more tables. And I want just insert uh, messages. And then we create this publication. After we check the publication, we do a check for a slot. And what is a slot? So a slot. Is like think of it like maybe Kafka consumer groups so it's a way to keep track at for the consumers of the publication where they are so if they read messages like we have 50 messages so if we read until the 25th so it's something like that so again we create this replication a bit different is that uh, we only should have one process per slot and the consumer group works in a different way, so it has different offsets for different partitions, stuff like that. Ignore that, uh, it's, I'm just complicating things. But yeah, this is a way to keep track of what is already read, so that at some point Postgres can look at the right ahead log and can uh, trash stuff that is not needed anymore because it was read already and it was already persisted correctly in the, the tables and stuff like that. Uh, so it's all good. So this is the initialization. We need a publication and a slot so then we can start um, listening for changes. So back here the code in the execute the sync. So after we initialize everything is in place so we can start the the actual logic. So we create a connection or a logical replication connection not just a normal connection here. Open the connection create like the, the slot here, create a slot, create the 
the object representing the slot, create some options, uh, passing in the publication name and the protocol version. So I'm using the latest one, apparently. Then I, I'll show you why I keep this here, but this is where we'll store temporarily the outbox message information. And then we actually start listening for changes. And as you can see, NPG SQL is already using some of the latest, more modern uh, C Sharp uh, things. Namely, this start replication returns an async enumerable. So every time a new message is added, uh, we'll get the for each. We'll get a new run of the of the of the loop. So sometimes we might get different messages. I saw that I got some message like commit message and some other that I don't remember, but we just care about the insert, so we're pattern matching over this, uh, else I just log debug just to see it. After that, this was the, the part that I found more a bit stranger, but I imagine without knowing, so I'm just coming up with things, but I imagine it might have something to do with the performance is that we can't just we don't have all the columns here to to get the values directly we have this new row which is a replication tuple and it's basically an async enumerable so we need to wait for each it and then grab each column at a time so this was the weirdest part of this api but i imagine there are reasons for for it being done this way so that's why i have that dictionary to store there so I go into the message relation columns, get the column name as the key of the of the in the dictionary, and then I get the actual column value. Increment the the i, uh, which is the column itself. So this is the weirdest part of this code, I guess. But all all of the rest is easier to understand. So then we have we grab the actual event, so we can use the type. I can show you just quickly uh, if I go to the producer data outbox message. So we have ID payload, the aggregate ID. So if we, in this case, I'm using orders as a, an example. So the aggregate ID will be the order ID, the aggregate type. It's something that will be used for the, that can be used for the topic name, the timestamp and the type. So the type will be the, like the type of the class. So I use the type and switch on it to get the correct type of event and then deserialize it correctly and then publish it. So there's a bunch of th stuff here that could be improved. So this could be less hard coded here for the publishing part. It could probably be more optimized if instead of we publishing one at a time, we could batch and then send a bunch to Kafka at the same time. I think that's a possibility that would improve our throughput. But uh, again, demo, one at a time, good enough. And that's it for this part. Uh, before that, uh, another important part, like in Kafka, when we produce, or better yet, in Kafka, when we read, we need to commit the offset so that it stores that we read until this point. It's the same for the replication in the right ahead log of Postgres. So we need to call this set replication status to the end of this replication message so that we know that we read until here, all this we don't care anymore, we handled. And that's it, that's all the code. As you can see, it's not super complex. Again, it's not production ready. I'm not handling possible failures. Uh, I didn't have a lot of worries with performance stuff, so we, we could batch stuff. Uh, improve this part, minimize all the parsing. Uh, right here I'm parsing JSON and then in the publish I'm, I'm serializing again to JSON, which probably we shouldn't serialize it as JSON in Kafka, we should use Protobuf for Avro, stuff like that. So again, not production ready, but just to see if all of this works and it works and it's not super hard. Uh, as I said, I think uh, I did this in like under a day just as a proof of concept, so some more days to make it more production ready and looks good. So 
Let's see this working. Uh, I have here, let's hope Docker Compose runs at first time. I have, normally it does, but I have seen it fail for reasons. So let's see, it might take a couple of minutes for everything to get going. And it seems to be working, I think. So let's go to the browser. Let's see if we can access con control center, topics, or the events, messages. Let's go to offset zero, and it's here. So we can see that we are getting, the messages are flowing, so it's all working. And if we go here to seek, it's working, so every, 30 seconds when the producer writes stuff to the database we just get a ton of messages dropped here as well so working well again i need to always say this because i feel sometimes we can it might seem that i'm saying that you should do it this way not exactly so if you can use existing libraries to handle these sorts of issues like and service bus mass transit, uh, what was the other one called? Brighter, brighter command, brighter command, something like that. So there are libraries that can handle this for you. So if you can use these libraries, understand how they work, and if they solve your problems, use them. Even if they are not free, um, some are, some, some aren't, but. It will, it's better to use proven infrastructure than writing everything yourself. Now, if they don't cover your scenario for some reason, or if you, you are not a .NET only shop and have a bunch of languages that you need to interact with and stuff like that, then maybe start looking at these options. Uh, first, maybe Divisium, that's already done and you could just use it. Maybe you don't want to, to have a JVM stuff so you need to look at .NET alternatives and then maybe this is what makes sense. But again, first, if you can use something that exists and covers the problems, do it. Then if not, start to look at this. But uh, yeah, I like to do this kind of stuff because it's fun, but it doesn't mean that we should just go running and over-engineer stuff into production that we could handle easier. And yeah, that's it. Uh, Hope it was useful and interesting. Uh, and hopefully some of you that were not aware that this was a thing now are. Uh, and yeah, uh, see you in the next one. Ah, don't forget, like, comments, subscribes, uh, share with folks. It helps out. So yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.